Dear friends in Christ, welcome to our daily reflection for the 8th of September. On this day, we celebrate the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Responsible children celebrate the birthday of their parents with joy and happiness because it has direct bearing on their own existence. As followers of Jesus, Mary is our mother. And so, with joy and gladness, let us celebrate this feast, which has direct connection with the history of our salvation. This is an important historical event, because as St. Andrew of Crete puts it, Hence, all creation sings with joy, exalts, and participates in the joy of this day. This is, in fact, the day on which the creator of the world constructed his temple. Today is the day on which by a stupendous project, a creature becomes the preferred dwelling of the creator. The celebration of this feast in Rome began in the 7th century, but in Jerusalem, tradition dates it back to the dedication of the Basilica of St. Anne. Though at first celebrated on different dates, the fixing of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception for the 8th of December has helped to align the dates to the 8th of September, nine months after the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. This celebration is at the heart of the history of our salvation in Christ. Not just because of the favor shown to Mary by God, but also because her birth transcends her own person. It is at the meeting point of the Old and the New Testaments as it brings to a close the time of waiting for the coming of the Messiah and it inaugurates a new era of the presence of God in human form among his people. Lumen Gentium says of her, Mary, the daughter of Zion, and ideal personification of Israel, is the last and most worthy representative of the people of the Old Covenant, but at the same time, she is the hope and the dawn of the whole world. With her, the times are fulfilled and a new economy is established. Lumen Gentium 55. The first reading today is taken from the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 5, and talks of her who is to bring forth the child who will cause the return of his brethren. The alternative reading taken from Romans, chapter 8, verses 28 to 30, talks of God who conforms those he foreknew to the image of his son, that they might be the firstborn among many brethren. No one fits these descriptions more than Mary. The Gospel, taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 16, and verses 18 to 23, tells the story of the conception of Jesus by a virgin betrothed to Joseph. By first giving the genealogy, it concludes by saying, this is a fulfillment of the prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Mary is that virgin who became the abode of the Lord's dwelling on coming into the world. Today's liturgy invites us. Let us celebrate with joy the birth of the Virgin Mary, of whom was born the Son of Justice. Her nativity was the hope of and the daybreak of salvation for all. Let us join in the celebration. As we continue to celebrate the season of creation, the words of Gloria Gupta calls on youths to get involved. It says, the season of creation is a reminder to young people that God is creator, and we humans, along with others, animals and plants, are creatures. It is a reminder that we need to take care of one another as our Creator takes care of us. The season of creation 
is important for youths as it recognizes us as leaders of today rather than the victims of tomorrow. Let us pray. Lord, you gave us Mary as the mother of all believers. Help us to follow her example of dutiful service to God and neighbor. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.